Karen Slattery was a vibrant young woman with a bright future ahead of her. At just 14 years old, she embodied the energy and optimism of youth. Karen lived in Delray Beach, Florida with her family. She was a beloved daughter, sister, and friend. Karen had dreams, aspirations, and a contagious zest for life that touched everyone who knew her. She had a passion for music and dreamed of one day becoming a veterinarian. Karen was a talented flute player and an active member of her school's marching band. She spent countless hours practicing and performing, her music a reflection of her vibrant spirit. Her dedication to her studies was equally impressive. Karen was a bright student, excelling in her classes and always eager to learn. She had a thirst for knowledge and a natural curiosity that made her a joy to teach. Beyond her academic and musical pursuits, Karen was a true friend. She had a warm smile and a kind heart, always willing to lend a helping hand. Her friends cherished her loyalty, her infectious laughter, and her ability to brighten even the toughest days. Karen's presence had a way of making everyone around her feel seen, heard, and loved. In the tapestry of life, Karen was a vibrant thread, intricately woven into the hearts of those who knew her. Her story, though tragically cut short, serves as a reminder of the preciousness of life and the devastating impact of senseless violence. Her legacy, forever intertwined with the tragedy of her untimely death, also shines a light on the importance of cherishing loved ones, pursuing dreams, and living each day to the fullest. February 20th, 1981, dawned like any other day in Delray Beach, Florida, but by nightfall, the community would be shaken to its core. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the quiet suburban streets. Families gathered for dinner, children finished their homework, and the normalcy of daily life prevailed. No one could have predicted the horror that was about to unfold. Karen Slattery, full of life and excited to spend time with a friend, was last seen alive on that fateful evening. She had told her family she was going to the mall, a typical outing for a teenager. Hours passed and Karen didn't return home. Concern turned to worry, then to frantic fear as the Slattery family realized their daughter was missing. The search for Karen began immediately, neighbors joining forces with the police, desperately combing through the town. Hope dwindled with each passing hour. The next day, the unthinkable happened. Karen's lifeless body was found, shattering the illusion of safety and plunging the community into a nightmare. The news of Karen's murder sent shockwaves through Delray Beach and beyond. The brutal nature of the crime, a young life so cruelly extinguished, left everyone grappling with a mix of grief, anger, and disbelief. How could such a horrific act occur, especially to someone as innocent and full of promise as Karen? The community mourned the loss of one of their own, while law enforcement launched a determined investigation to bring the perpetrator to justice. On that fateful evening, Karen Slattery, brimming with youthful energy, left the comfort of her home, eager to meet a friend at the Palm Beach Mall. The air was warm, carrying the scent of tropical flowers and the promise of a carefree night. Unbeknownst to Karen, a predator lurked in the shadows, his eyes fixed on her as she made her way to the mall, her laughter echoing in the twilight. Witnesses later recalled seeing a suspicious man near the mall entrance around the time Karen disappeared. He was described as being in his early 20s, with a stocky build and an unsettling intensity in his eyes. Some remembered seeing him talking to Karen, but their interactions seemed casual, almost ordinary. No one could have guessed that this seemingly innocuous encounter would be Karen's last moments of freedom. As darkness descended, casting long shadows across the mall parking lot, Karen's friend grew increasingly worried. Karen was always punctual and her absence was out of character. Concern turned to dread as the minutes stretched into an hour, then two. Phone calls to Karen's home confirmed their worst fears. She had never arrived at the mall. Panic set in as the horrifying realization dawned upon Karen's loved ones. Something was terribly wrong. The search for Karen began that night, a frantic race against time fueled by a desperate hope that she would be found safe and sound. But as the hours ticked by, the silence surrounding Karen's whereabouts grew deafening a sinister harbinger of the tragedy that was to come. The following morning, the idyllic facade of Delray Beach was shattered. The relentless search for Karen had yielded a heartbreaking discovery. 
In a secluded wooded area, far from the bustling mall and the safety of her home, Karen's lifeless body was found. The news spread like wildfire, engulfing the community in a wave of grief, disbelief, and raw terror. The scene that greeted the police officers was nothing short of horrific. Karen's once vibrant eyes were closed forever, her youthful face frozen in a mask of pain and terror. The vibrant life that had pulsed within her was gone, extinguished by a brutal act of violence. The sight of Karen's lifeless body, a stark contrast to the innocence and beauty she had embodied in life, fueled a burning desire for justice. Forensics experts meticulously combed the crime scene, searching for any clue that could lead them to Karen's killer. Every blade of grass, every fallen leaf, was scrutinized, each piece of evidence a potential link in the chain of events that led to this senseless tragedy. The pressure mounted as the community demanded answers, desperate for someone to be held accountable for this heinous crime. The discovery of Karen's body marked a turning point in the investigation. What had begun as a missing person's case transformed into a full-blown homicide investigation. The idyllic coastal town of Delray Beach, once a sanctuary for families and a haven for dreams, was now the backdrop of a nightmare. The shadow of Karen's murder loomed large, casting a pall over the once peaceful streets and forever altering the lives of those who knew and loved her. Section 3. Initial Steps. The Investigation Begins. The weight of the investigation fell upon the shoulders of seasoned detectives, their faces etched with grim determination. Time was of the essence, every passing moment potentially allowing Karen's killer to slip further away. They worked tirelessly following every lead, however tenuous, determined to bring Karen's murderer to justice and provide some semblance of closure to a grieving community. Witnesses came forward, their memories fragmented by shock and grief, yet each detail, each recollection, was carefully documented, piecing together the events leading up to Karen's disappearance. Sketches of the suspicious man seen near the mall were circulated, hoping to trigger recognition and bring forth more witnesses. The investigation was a complex puzzle, each piece of information a vital clue in the pursuit of truth and justice. The investigation extended beyond the borders of Delray Beach, reaching out to neighboring jurisdictions in a coordinated effort to leave no stone unturned. The FBI offered their assistance, their resources and expertise, adding to the growing task force dedicated to solving Karen's murder. The investigation was relentless, a testament to the unwavering commitment to seeking justice for Karen and restoring a sense of security to a community shaken to its core. As days turned into nights, the detectives worked tirelessly, their dedication fueled by a shared sense of purpose and a deep empathy for Karen and her family. The investigation was far from over, but their commitment never wavered. They knew that somewhere out there, concealed beneath a veneer of normalcy, lurked a monster who had preyed upon an innocent young girl, and they were determined to stop him from hurting anyone else. Section 4. A Community in Fear Delray Beach reacts. The news of Karen's murder sent shockwaves through the quiet coastal town of Delray Beach, the idyllic image of a peaceful community, where children played freely and neighbors looked out for one another, was shattered, replaced by a palpable sense of fear and vulnerability. Parents clutched their children a little tighter, their laughter now tinged with a hint of unease. The tragedy of Karen's death served as a stark reminder that even in paradise, evil could lurk in the shadows. The once familiar streets now seemed ominous, the rustling leaves a source of anxiety rather than tranquility. The community, once a source of strength and support, now grappled with a shared sense of vulnerability, their sense of security irrevocably broken. In the aftermath of Karen's murder, vigils were held, candles flickering in the darkness, a poignant symbol of a life cut short and a community united in grief. Flowers and messages of love adorned makeshift memorials, testaments to the profound impact Karen had made on those fortunate enough to have known her. The community mourned the loss of their innocence, the shattering of their peace, and the realization that true evil could touch even the most idyllic of places. Yet, amidst the grief and fear, there was also a glimmer of hope. The community, though wounded, refused to be defined by this tragedy. They rallied around Karen's family, offering support and solace in their darkest hour. They vowed to honor her memory by working together to prevent such a tragedy from ever happening again. Karen's death, 
though a devastating loss, ignited a collective determination to create a safer future for their children, a future where her light would continue to shine brightly in their hearts. Section 1. Dead Ends and Breakthroughs – The Early Stages of the Investigation The investigation into Karen Slattery's murder was a grueling labyrinth of dead ends and fleeting glimmers of hope. Detectives worked tirelessly, chasing down every lead, however insignificant it seemed. They interviewed countless individuals, their notebooks filled with statements, observations, and theories, each one a potential piece of the puzzle that was Karen's murder. Days turned into weeks, and the pressure mounted with each passing hour. The community, desperate for answers, grew increasingly impatient. The fear that had gripped Delray Beach in the wake of Karen's murder showed no signs of abating. The investigators felt the weight of their responsibility, knowing that each passing moment could be the difference between justice for Karen and her killer remaining free to strike again. Forensic experts meticulously analyzed every piece of evidence collected from the crime scene, searching for any trace of the perpetrator. Fibers, hairs, and fingerprints were scrutinized under microscopes, each analysis a painstakingly slow process, yet crucial in building a case against Karen's killer. The investigators knew that even the smallest detail, often overlooked by the untrained eye, could hold the key to solving this horrific crime. Despite their unwavering dedication, the investigation seemed to be hitting one roadblock after another. Witnesses provided conflicting accounts, and promising leads often led to dead ends. The frustration was palpable, yet the detectives refused to give up hope. They clung to the belief that somewhere amidst the tangled web of evidence lay the crucial clue that would lead them to Karen's killer. Weeks into the investigation, a breakthrough emerged from the forensic lab, a beacon of hope in the otherwise bleak landscape of the Karen Slattery murder case. A single fingerprint, lifted from a cigarette butt found near Karen's body, provided a tantalizing clue, a whisper of the killer's identity. The fingerprint, though partial, was clear enough for a positive identification. The fingerprint belonged to Dwayne Owen, a 23-year-old drifter with a history of petty crime and a reputation for violence. His rap sheet, though troubling, did not include any offenses as heinous as murder, making him an unlikely suspect initially. The fingerprint, however, placed him at the scene of the crime, elevating him to the status of prime suspect in Karen's murder. The discovery of Owen's fingerprint ignited a flurry of activity within the investigation team. Detectives scrambled to gather information about Owen's whereabouts, his movements in the days leading up to and following Karen's murder. His photograph was circulated among law enforcement agencies, and a warrant was issued for his arrest, turning the once elusive drifter into a wanted fugitive. The fingerprint identification, though a significant breakthrough, was just the beginning. The investigators knew that finding Owen was only the first step in a long and arduous journey towards securing justice for Karen. They had a name, a face, and a fingerprint, but they still needed to build a solid case one that would withstand the scrutiny of a court of law and ensure that Dwayne Owen would be held accountable for his horrific crime. With Dwayne Owen identified as their prime suspect, the investigation shifted into overdrive. The manhunt for Owen became a race against time, the detectives driven by the knowledge that each passing moment could be the difference between capturing a dangerous criminal and him slipping through their grasp, potentially putting others at risk. Owen's transient lifestyle, his lack of a fixed address or employment, made tracking him down a logistical nightmare. Leads poured in from across the state, each one meticulously followed, hoping it would lead them to Owen's doorstep. The investigators worked around the clock, their dedication fueled by a mix of adrenaline, determination, and the unwavering desire to bring Karen's killer to justice. The media frenzy surrounding the case both helped and hindered the investigation. Owen's face, plastered on newspapers and television screens across the state, made him instantly recognizable, increasing the chances of a tip from the public. However, the constant media attention also had the potential to spook Owen, driving him further underground and making him even more difficult to apprehend. As the days turned into weeks and Owen remained elusive, a sense of frustration and anxiety began to creep in. The investigators, though exhausted and emotionally drained, 
refused to give up hope. They knew that Owen was out there somewhere and they were determined to bring him to justice, no matter how long it took. Their dedication to Karen's memory and their commitment to protecting their community fueled their relentless pursuit of a killer. After weeks of relentless searching, a concerned citizen recognized Owen from a wanted poster. Dwayne Owen was apprehended at a construction site in West Palm Beach, bringing relief to a community on edge. The focus now shifted to building an airtight case to ensure Owen would be held accountable for his horrific crime. The courtroom buzzed with a somber energy as the trial of Dwayne Owen commenced. The prosecution, armed with meticulous evidence, laid out their case with chilling clarity. Each piece of evidence chipped away at Owen's defense, painting a picture of a cold and calculated killer. The defense aimed to sow seeds of uncertainty in the minds of the jurors. The fate of Dwayne Owen and the pursuit of justice for Karen Slattery rested in the hands of the jury. The trial of Dwayne Owen became a focal point for the Delray Beach community. The prosecution constructed a narrative of guilt that was difficult to refute. After weeks of intense proceedings, the jury reached a verdict, guilty. Dwayne Owen was found guilty of the first-degree murder of Karen Slattery. During the sentencing phase, the prosecution emphasized the brutal nature of Karen's murder. The judge sentenced Dwayne Owen to death, reflecting the severity of his crime. The trial of Dwayne Owen concluded, but the ripples of Karen Slattery's tragic death continued. Karen's memory inspired initiatives aimed at enhancing child safety and preventing future tragedies. Dwayne Owen faced additional trials for other heinous crimes. Karen Slattery's story became a powerful reminder of the importance of cherishing loved ones and advocating for justice. Karen Slattery's story compels us to reflect on our community values and safety measures. Each crime against a child serves as a reminder of societal vulnerabilities. These incidents push for more stringent laws and better protective measures. The narrative of Karen's death prompts a critical examination of media's role in shaping public perception. Media coverage can galvanize a community, influencing public discourse and policy. The justice system comes under scrutiny, opening dialogues about the adequacy of legal responses to violent crimes against children. Crimes against children highlight a grievous issue within our societal structure. These acts are profound betrayals of trust that shake societal safety and morality. Community vigilance is crucial for child protection. Education plays a pivotal role in this protective framework. Community programs should include comprehensive safety education. Society must provide robust psychological support systems for victims and their families. The tragedy of Karen Slattery's death highlights the need for effective public policies focused on child protection. Governments and organizations must collaborate to create a protective legislative framework. Technologies like GPS tracking and online monitoring can enhance child protection. International cooperation is crucial in combating crimes against children. The story of Karen Slattery is a call to action. Protecting our children is a collective societal duty. Awareness campaigns are vital for educating and alerting the community. Businesses can contribute by funding child protection initiatives. Schools should be safe havens for children. A proactive approach can make a significant difference in child protection. Karen Slattery's story is a poignant reminder of the fragility of life. Her memory serves as a beacon, guiding us to cherish loved ones and advocate for justice. Scholarships and community initiatives in her name strive to prevent future tragedies. By working together, we can create a world where Karen's story is not repeated.
Section 2. Join the conversation honoring Karen's memory. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Karen's story. Her tragic death serves as a stark reminder that we must protect our children, our most vulnerable citizens. We must work together to create a society where such horrific acts are unthinkable. Now I want to hear from you. Please share your thoughts and feelings about Karen's story in the comments section below. Let's use this platform to engage in a meaningful discussion about child safety, community responsibility, and preventing future tragedies. If you found this video informative and impactful, please consider liking it and sharing it with your friends and family. Spreading awareness is crucial in our collective effort to create a safer world for children. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content on true crime, social justice, and inspiring stories of resilience. Thank you for your support in helping us amplify these important conversations. Together we can make a difference.